Hello again, I'm Donna Aroldi with Business Travel News, uh, editor of Lodging and Meetings. And uh, I am here today with Kieran Delaney, founder and CEO of Hubley, uh, which until recently was known as MeetingsBooker.com. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, can you tell us what led to the rebranding of the company? Yeah, so um, we started life as MeetingsBooker.com and our mission was to digitalize discovering and booking meeting spaces. And we, we did that very successfully and scaled it around the world. But we've also added new solutions to the platform. So we've added the ability to book uh, group accommodation on its own. And also recently this year to book workspaces. So we just felt Meetings Booker was no longer really describing the, the, the offering. And we thought it was time to, you know, add a new brand and Hubly is is the perfect name for the business now it kind of describes what we're doing we're helping people to connect in person whether it's a meeting or a workspace or an off-site mm -hmm. yeah so we're delighted with it it's been really exciting to launch it and it's been very well received great I was gonna ask you what uh, the genesis of Hubly was so hub Lee yeah, yeah exactly listen it's it's um we're seeing now that like you know, we're we're working with a lot of business travel travel managers, but also more and more real estate as well. Oh, okay. So yeah, so hub is kind of the idea behind the name is that you know, it's a space you can you can find to succeed, mm -hmm. for whatever that that means for you. So yeah. Um, as you mentioned, you've added workspaces yeah. to the site. Can you give us some trends you're seeing in that arena? Yeah. So we've we've always had a mixture of, of supply on Hubley. So 48% um, of our bookings go to hotels and 52% go to a whole range of different types of, of venues, co-working spaces, independent venues. So we were already working with providers of, of uh, you know, co-working spaces. So what we did really was just give them the ability to sell meeting rooms and also day passes and private uh, office space. So I suppose the trend we're seeing is that it's becoming with you know a new requirement because mm -hmm. a lot of employees are working from home and mm -hmm. um, a lot of organizations have quite a distributed workforce. Um, so the ability to find a space to work on your own for the day is suddenly now something that we all need and equally within business travel we're seeing that there's a new trend where you know, we expect that you know, business travel trips are going to be slightly longer in duration. So we're going to see people, instead of, you know, five flights to the US a year, they're probably, you know, probably going to go twice, but stay longer and really maximize their time in, in the location. So when you're staying longer somewhere, you know, having a local workspace to go to just to work and focus for the day is now really becoming a, an area that's joining the business travel um, you know, community as a, as a requirement. So yeah, they're the kind of the main trends we're seeing and, and the reasons why we launched uh, Workspaces. Right, right, uh, interesting. I was gonna ask you, you touched on it a bit, but maybe you can go into it a little more deeply. Uh, what does the future of work and business travel together look like? You mentioned the longer trips and having that workspace available. Yeah, yeah, we, we, did, we completed a white paper um, on the, how the future work is impacting business travel. It's available on hubby.com. Yeah, we're seeing five trends kind of emerge. Um, one of those is that there are going to be much more sort of domestic, regional, small meetings, which um, is really about teams reconnecting, having worked remotely for quite a period of time. Um, like those organizations like Microsoft have hired 25,000 people during the pandemic so those smaller regional meetings are definitely going to be a new a new enhanced uh, use case uh, equally uh, off sites are also on the rise so where teams will just get together for two days and have an overnight stay and and reconnect and build relationships and share ideas and, and innovate so those types of, of bookings are you know, really about relationship building, right? So it'll be dinners and team building activities, etc. Longer stays is, is another area and obviously workspaces within our report as well. So yeah, and you know, the other, the fifth trend we're seeing is simply just sustainability is, is here to stay, right? So it's kind of the future work, I think, has, has focused the whole world on 
the, the fact that you know you don't have to travel as much and you can have local meetings and hybrid meetings as well where some people are attending virtually so we're launching a whole new sustainability module on Hubly. Oh, great. Yeah. When is that set to go live? That's set to go live um, in Q4 this year, so at the end of the year. Okay. And it, it kind of includes three main components. The first is the ability to book spaces based on their sustainability policies, which is really cool. So when you're searching on Hubly, you can see pricing, but also make decisions around their sustainability you know, policies. Also, you'll be able to decide where to meet or where to have an off-site based on the lowest carbon usage, which is a huge opportunity to drive savings for sustainability. And finally, an area that we really feel is a huge opportunity as well is around virtual attendees. So when you're having a meeting and there's 50 people in the venue, you know, it could be 100 people connecting virtually. So what our platform will do is it will track the the travel savings from those 100 virtual attendees and help the organization to build that measurement into their analytics for sustainability. Great. Um, data, always key. Yeah. And interesting insights. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that when you get closer to the actual launch. Yeah. Um, can't wait to report on it. Yeah. And uh, thank you for the little uh, preview. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I also realized uh, you mentioned that you added group accommodation only yes. booking. Um, how recently did you add that? Yeah, we added that actually nearly two years ago. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay. But, it, but what's interesting is that we're really driving um, driving the product development of that, of that product itself. Okay. So what we found was, you know, we started with online bookings for meetings, then we built an RFP system which was for meetings with accommodation. And what we've now launched is the accommodation only component. Okay. So what it does is, it's very interesting because it, like in our space, it, it's generally an unmanaged area, right? So if you want to, there's online booking tools for, you know, transient travel mm -hmm. and for big events, but for smaller groups and, and meetings, really we're the main kind of online booking solution for that segment. So what we've done is designed a group accommodation platform to just help organizations to source book group, group accommodation mm -hmm. and easily manage the process by building in their MSA terms and conditions and having rooming lists and just driving a kind of self-serve automated process for group stays. Great. And um, I don't recall, is there any limitation on the size of the groups for those accommodation bookings? No. Okay. No. Um, typically we're seeing it's, you know, it, it, it's generally for smaller one to or 10 to 100 okay. people is, is generally the area that, you know, uh, is used. So, but obviously it's, it can be over multiple nights, right? So we're seeing clients who book 50 sleeping rooms for four nights. Okay. So 200 sleeping rooms in total. Right. But normally it's that size area because mm -hmm. when you get into bigger room blocks, it's often around bigger conventions, right? Big, big events. Whereas now what we're seeing with future of work and off sites and there's this kind of flexible requirement for smaller groups, 50, 30, 40 uh, room blocks. Right. And that's kind of the, the area we see the biggest demand at the moment. And obviously that reflects where the market is now as well, right? As the market right. recovers and more of those big events coming back, we'll start to see that usage coming through as well. Great. Um, what's next for Hubly? I mean, aside from the sustainability, Anything else uh, yeah, on the there's, horizon? There's lots going on. You know, we're we're going to be announcing a really exciting uh, new partnership with an airline. Okay. At the end of the year, where we're going to be powering a work from anywhere platform for them. So we're really excited about that. Um, we're also going to be opening an office in the U.S. Oh. As well, which you, is. Can you share the location? We're we're finalizing it. Okay. So we're yeah, it's great. It's looking at you know where the best locations are. So that's really exciting. So we'll be strengthening our team in the U.S. and you know having a, a base there because we're seeing a massive increase in in um, you know in client uh, adoption in the U.S. in particular. So yeah, so lots of new initiatives and projects to to work on. Exciting. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, very much appreciated, as always. I love to see. I'm glad we can do this in person. It's been a while. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, I'll be back around 1240 with Dennis Vilovich from Troop. Thanks again.